Hi guys, welcome to the podcast. Um, this is part three of three. I wanted to uh, get this one in uh, because I was excited about this whole process. And um, uh, so when I started this journey, I didn't, I didn't really know it was a journey. I didn't even know that it was a destination, to be honest with everybody. Um, it was just something that I knew that I was compelled to do is change the way that my habits uh, were going with regard to health and really make changes in three areas. Uh, one was diet, two was um, uh, my physical exercise uh, scenario, and three was just everything else, um, uh, which I'm gonna talk about today. And uh, that's what this podcast is about. This is three of three, and uh, it's my journey in, in really how I lost uh, 75 pounds and, and being an entrepreneur in business and all of that. I think uh, for a lot of people that are in that scenario, it um, really is a, is a stressful, pressureful, uh, different type of lifestyle. And I think for a lot of people, um, it's one that, uh, you know, it, it, their health can deteriorate, uh, pretty darn quickly. Uh, I can't believe I'm using the word darn, but I'm using it. So the first, uh, podcast of this series was about my diet and how I changed that. The second one was about what I was doing, uh, physically, and this one is about everything else. Um, you know, when you when you take on a task like this and you go down this journey, I think the idea of of uh, putting um, your health first and understanding the idea of how that affects you in all areas of your life, from how you eat to um, uh, what you, uh, uh, do for exercise and physical activity, how you do it is another big, important thing. And then finally, other, what do I mean by this other, by the way, all these things I'm going to be talking about in this particular podcast, if you're watching this on YouTube, I know you're, you could be on Spotify or Apple podcast, Google podcast, but if you're watching this on YouTube, I will put all the links, uh, in the chat so you can see that. Um, so make sure you check that out and comment and let me know what you think of the three of three, but really all three of these podcasts to give you some insight into this. Um, so the, the other, the other thing that I think is important to realize is you can't do this on your own. So, uh, so uh, thankful that I have a family that supports me with this, Heather, my wife, and Avi, my son, and really even everybody else, Jordan and Peyton and, and everybody through this process. And I wanted to mention that first in this podcast, because I think, um, you know, no man is, is an island. Um, no person, when they're trying to accomplish something, can do it on their own. I guess they could, but it's harder. It's a lot harder. So I want to really thank them. Uh, for this so far where I'm at. I'm not done. I'm not at a destination. I just want to put that out there. So the other thing that is interesting with uh, regard to um, this is not only my family has been quite supportive, but I attracted in my life these um, mentors, if you will. Uh, and the, these mentors are really people that I add to um, the, uh, my repertoire every day of who I listen to, who I surround myself with, uh, what kind of motivation I get. And so I listed a bunch of mentors that I'm going to get to here in a moment. So uh, I'm going to back up a little bit and talk about the other. Uh, so again, the first uh, podcast in this series was about my, my diet. The second one was about my physical workout scenario. And uh, this third one is the other. What does the other mean? The other means that um, I've been focusing on other areas of my life for the health purposes of it. The main one, sleep. I've always been a sleeper. 
I've always been somebody that loves sleep. Uh, you know, from when my mother would tell me as a young kid, you know, I love sleep so much that, you know, I just, I didn't want to wake up for school. A lot of kids are like that, but I really didn't want to wake up not because I didn't want to go to school. I wanted to go to school, but I, I just wanted to sleep. i really, really love sleep. So, um, for Christmas this year, uh, Heather got me this, um, it, for those of you on YouTube, you can see this, this aura ring. And the aura ring is interesting because of the idea behind um, uh, what aura does. Uh, so I'll, I'll put the link to that in the chat below for those of you on YouTube. On everybody else, you can look it up, O-U-R-A ring. And this really does a lot for your health, but one of the main things it does is it tracks your sleep. And it tracks it in a way that shows you not only how much sleep you're getting, but the quality of sleep that you're getting. And as I started on this journey, I realized how important it is to have a really good quality sleep uh, to go along with a diet and, and exercise. The idea that um, uh, someone can do all of this without getting the right sleep, I think is complete and utter nonsense. Uh, I meet a lot of people when I travel. I meet a lot of people when I'm on the road that uh, tell me, oh, you know, I only get two or three, four hours of sleep. I I'm here to tell you that's BS. And I'm also here to tell you that that person could probably perform better if they had the right amount of sleep. If they didn't have, um, and they almost brag about that, right? They almost brag about the fact that, hey, I don't even need sleep. That's BS. Studies and studies and studies have shown how important sleep is. So when you hear somebody say that, I know you guys have heard somebody say that. It might even be you saying that. Really think about what you're saying and look into the science of this and, and really kind of understand how sleep is important to you. Uh, this Aura Ring is, is really helped me with that. And that's one of my others. That's one of the things like I, I wouldn't want to be without and really kind of making sure I get that eight hours of sleep per night, uh, sometimes more, sometimes less, but I really try to focus on that eight hours per night. Um, the other one that I think has been uh, uh, important for me and Heather's going to laugh at this a little bit has been this, uh, the Apple watch, um, the Apple watch, I'm an Apple guy, you know, not a PC guy. A lot of people are PC guys. A lot of people are Apple guys. Uh, but the Apple watch has been really, really important to me because, uh, of what it does. It communicates, uh, several things. It communicates with my aura ring, um, with the sleep scenario. It also communicates on my workouts. I use something called map my run. Uh, but but I also use it for other things, you know, on the fly with emails and texts and uh, even phone calls. I, I even use this as a phone. Not a lot. And I got to tell you, I feel cool while I'm doing it. I feel like I'm, I'm not a Star Trek guy. I'm a Star Wars person, not a Star Trek person, but a Star Wars person. But the one thing that I did think was cool on Star Trek was when they talked in their wrist. And that's kind of how I feel with when I'm on the phone with my uh, iWatch. Um, so I, I really think that those have been a big thing. Again, Heather has been, I'm going to uh, single her out. She's been my number one supporter with this and, and really does way above and beyond, doesn't need to do this, but above and beyond what all of this, uh, has done for me. Like she, what she's done has been unbelievable with diet and just, timing and, and other things as well. So shout out to you, Heather. I love you very much. Um, I, I didn't want to go too far without saying, um, giving a vice. Uh, I, and I don't know, is it important to have vices? Maybe. Uh, I, I don't know if that is um, the uh, idea of, of um, good habits and not to have a vice as long as they're not hurting other people. And obviously you don't want to hurt yourself either, but vices are, are really, um, one that, uh, you know, for me, I gave up a lot of things, bad eating things. I gave up a lot of, of, um, 
uh, some drink. I gave up drinking uh, just because I felt better about it. I didn't have an issue or anything. I just, I just uh, wasn't part of uh, the journey that I was on. So I gave that up. And so uh, I do smoke a cigar periodically. So uh, I didn't really give that up and I don't smoke. It's probably since September, I've probably had three cigars, maybe something like that. But um, I think it's important maybe not to give up everything in some people's lives. That was something that I just kind of held on to a little bit. And I don't make it, I don't do it like I used to. I used to smoke a lot more than that, but I do love cigars and I love the, just the, the, the uh, environment behind uh, cigars uh, with that. So mentors, let's talk about that. Who are these people that I've kind of absorbed in my life that have helped me during this? And there's about, I would say about 12, 15, uh, somewhere in there that have really helped me in this journey. I'm putting these people together. There's no particular order, but I find these people fascinating. And uh, I travel and I speak and I do a lot of, of, um, of uh, uh, public speaking about the importance of surrounding yourself with good quality people and good sound people. And uh, those sound people are the ones that give me the ideas. They're the ones that give me the research. They're the ones that give me the motivation to kind of do what I'm doing. I haven't missed a workout since uh, October 1st or that first week at least. I haven't missed uh, kind of eating right. I really haven't cheated. Um, I think a very few times where I tasted frosting or something like that, but in, the, in a larger sense of things, I don't do cheat days. You probably heard me from the other uh, podcasts talk about that. But here they are. The first one uh, I got to lead off with is a guy by the name of David Goggins. Uh, I don't know if you read his book, You Can't Hurt Me, but that was a really, that, that probably got everything going for me. Uh, the reason that that got everything going for me is I looked at this guy, former Navy SEAL um, and uh, former everything in the military, just about. And this guy's getting after it. He's running ultra marathons. He's in peak shape. Um, he's a no nonsense guy. He's right to it. No excuses. And uh, it's been it's been really, really interesting to see his journey of where he came from, what he's been able to accomplish. And uh, this is a guy that lost 110 pounds to to make the Navy SEALs to go get invited in, in to get into the scenario to go to um, um, have the chance to be a Navy SEAL. And he, he didn't, uh, well, I'll, I'll leave the story for those of you that didn't read the book, um, but uh, You Can't Hurt Me is the name of the book. But man, it's really, really, really cool, uh, his storyline. That's probably who got me going, his grit, determination, and really the understanding of finishing a goal. At, at first, I didn't even know I was on a goal. I just wanted to change what I was doing. And um, that was really, really important to me. Uh, the second person uh, kind of plays along with that. Jesse Itzler uh, is the CEO of uh, NetJets, founder of NetJets, and uh, several other things, uh, you know, coconut water and, and uh, several other things. And he's an entrepreneur that runs a lot. And I read his book, Living with a Navy SEAL. Ironically, that Navy SEAL was David Goggins. And the idea of David Goggins uh, living with him for a month and training with him uh, was not only a book that was motivating and inspiring, but it was very, uh, how should I say, it was very, um, it, it was humorous, but it was also real. It made things real because what David Goggins had Jesse Itzler do in the book is kind of what I was feeling. <laughs> you know, it was kind of what I was feeling. I was thinking, you know, gosh, what if I had David Goggins in my ear every day? You know, how would that change what I did? How would that my workouts be? Things like that. Uh, the third guy is a guy by the name of Nick Bear. And he, uh, he his company is um, Nick Bear, Bear Nutrition. Uh, and uh, his 
idea of being a hybrid athlete, which is a really cool thing. He's not only, uh, he started off as a bodybuilder, but now he done, he's uh, heavy into running. He does ultra marathons, marathons, and he's, he's heavy into, you know, his supplements and, and the things that his company does, which fully transparent. I have not used any bear supplements yet. Uh, I follow him on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, I have not used his supplements yet because I, I don't use a lot of supplements and I probably should, but I felt like I wanted to get to the point where I had my diet consistent enough where I understood what was good and what was bad, what was fuel, what wasn't. And then now I'm at the point where I am ready to slowly add supplements for performance and, and other things. I feel that I'm at that point. Uh, I just didn't want to add dietary pressures by adding supplements and things that didn't agree with me or things that I didn't think I needed, but I see other people doing. I just wanted to get a good zero grounding of that. I think I'm there. So uh, certainly Bear Nutrition, from what I know that Nick Bear and his company puts in the, the products that he sells, uh, th that would be the one that I would I would look at for sure. Um so Nick Bear, look him up. I, again, I'll put all these guys in the chat if you're watching on YouTube, but uh, great guy, really good insight on his, um, his YouTube channel. And by the way, David Goggins, if you follow him on Instagram, he does these little snippets that are, that are motivating. And um, he, he says at the end of every minute snippet or so of motivation while he's running typically or working out, he says, stay hard. And, and that's just kind of a, a shout out to, you know, no excuses, go right at it, give it 150%, you know, kind of thing. The next one is a guy by the name of Thomas DeLauer. I don't know if you know this guy. He's a YouTuber. He's on YouTube. He's a fitness specialist. This guy is a fit, fit athlete. All these guys are fit, David, Jesse, Nick, uh, and Thomas, but he's a really fit athlete. And I believe he's a nutritionist as well. He really breaks down the science of the chemistry in your body and how what you put in your body affects that. And uh, he's a really good person to follow. Again, you become the five or six people that you associate yourself with and you surround yourself with. So this was definitely uh, a person that I added to that mix. Um, Tom DeLauer is, is a guy that I don't think he does, although he can run, and I've seen him run on some of the videos, uh, but he's more fitness and staying completely fit and working out. Uh, does a really, really good job of that. Thomas DeLauer, you should look him up. Um, another one is uh, a guy by the name of uh, Paul Revelia, another fitness guy that I watch on YouTube. Um, he's a very interesting guy because he, uh, is a runner as well. And he, a, a bodybuilder as well, uh, kind of one of these hybrid athletes, uh, but he does more bodybuilding and he does talks about fitness. But what I like about, uh, Paul Revelia is he does a lot of things at home with his home gym. And I got to tell you over my last, um, uh, seven, eight months, nine months now, um, my home gym through the wintertime has got me through a lot of places and got me through a lot of things and, and understanding the idea of, of how um, I was able to get my exercise in, get my diet in and, and really make sure that uh, I was on point with all that. So uh, I followed that guy to a T, uh, Paul Revelia. Uh, you can look him up. He's got a YouTube channel. And that's really where I follow him. I don't follow him too in too many other places. Here's another big one for me. Um, science has always been an important part of everything that I do. I have a biology degree is one of my degrees. And um, I love the idea of science in business. I love the idea of science in working out. I love the idea of science in really just about everything that a person can do because it, it makes up a lot of that stuff, right? So uh, this guy, Dr. Peter Atia, is very, very well versed. He started out as a cardiac surgeon. He's got a YouTube channel. I'll, I'll put um, 
his uh, uh, links down below again if you're on YouTube. If you're not, you can look him up, Peter Atia. And he's a he's a uh, Formula One racer. He's a uh, he was a bicyclist uh, uh, on the circuit. He uh, talks a lot about where I get this zone two and zone five training for. And the interesting mix that Peter Atilla puts in this, Dr. Peter Atilla puts in this, is the fact that he was a cardiac surgeon and he uh, understands cardiovascular fitness and mitochondrial uh, performance in cells for energy. Now, I know I'm bringing out a little bit of the biology here and and uh, hopefully that's okay, but uh, mitochondrial uh, performance is the energy powerhouse of the cell. The energy powerhouse of the cell is the mitochondria and they produce something called ATP, adenine triphosphates. And, and these are really the where the energy happens on the cellular level. Now, regardless of where we get our energy from and where we burn those calories from, you know, we start to bring in the mix, you know, from a more grand level, proteins and carbohydrates and fats and things like that. Um, this is really where it happens. And Dr. Peter Atia is probably the best person um, around that you could tie into if you want to know this stuff and you really want to understand what is uh, uh, important with this zone two and zone five training um, and, and what that means and, and what heart, uh, cardiac heart training and heart rate training means in general. I would definitely uh, advise you to, to follow them. Um, uh, Nick Baer also talks about that. Thomas DeLauer also talks about that. So, you know, these are guys that all kind of speak the same language. And so um, a really good standpoint. Again, these aren't, guys aren't giving you specific medical advice. Either am I, by the way, my disclaimer is sit with professionals and your doctors and a nutritionist and, and uh, 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 maybe a physical therapist if you need that, but someone that uh, is a fitness coach as well. Uh, sit with them and make sure that they are uh, uh, doing the right um, scenario for you. Uh, that's my disclaimer. Use it for what you want. The next few people beside, well, there's one more. Dr. Gabriel Lyon is also another one. She is a specialist in exercise physiology and she really understands this idea. I almost forgot about her. She's really, really good about the physical uh, level at the cellular level. So much of what we do from a, a health and science and really the studies behind um, being in shape and, and uh, uh, um, uh, being the best that you can be physically and longevity. A lot of these guys talk about longevity, living to 100 years and uh, centurions and all of that. What makes that happen? Not only get to not only to get to 100 years old, which is a cool, cool thing, but to be functional at 100 years old. A lot of people can get to 100 years old, but they're not functional, unfortunately. But wouldn't it be great to get there? So like, for instance, Dr. Peter Atia uh, talks about this. That's his sport now, is getting to 100 and doing these 24 basic uh, exercises or uh, accomplishments to be able to do at 100. For instance, lying on the floor and getting up, not using your arms would be one of them out of the 24. So anyway, uh, Dr. Gabriel Lyon does the same thing. She's a really, really good um, uh, important, uh, aspect to that. So, uh, I would, I would definitely, definitely encourage you to follow her as well. And then from a running standpoint, uh, because that's the, the, the fitness scenario that I have chosen. Um, and you know, run, whether it's running or biking, um, and putting myself in a, a better shape by doing that. I started off walking, by the way. I think I mentioned that in my, my second series uh, podcast is I started off walking, but then I got into running. And these guys have really helped me with that. Matter of fact, they helped me with walking. And then they got me into running. They got me into a, uh, a, a way that I could perform better and a way that I could see different 
goals come up and, and also be able to react uh, differently with what I was doing with my diet and with my exercise and things like that. For instance, the half marathon in Indianapolis, you know, some of the other races that I've signed up for. Never even thought about doing that when this whole thing started, by the way. It was just focusing on my health a little bit better. And, and um, this turned into where it is today. And I'm loving the journey. Again, I don't care about the destination, but I am loving the journey. And I feel like that has been such a key with, uh, with what I've been doing is, uh, is understanding that whole scenario uh, of, of really falling in love with the journey. The workouts, I love it. The eating right, I love it. I haven't missed a thing. Um, so anyway, uh, but these guys have really helped me with that. A guy by the name of Mark Lewis and a, another guy by the name of Coach Perry. I forget Coach Perry's first name. But these guys, um, there's a lot of good runners from England. And these guys uh, run there and they are um, uh, trainers, if you will. They have YouTube channels. And I would definitely encourage you guys, if you're in the walking or running circuit, to go there. I guess um, I guess Mark Lewis does some biking as well. So if you're into biking, he may be another source for you. But they make things um, they make things very fluid in the information they deliver. They also make things very um, informative at a level that everybody can understand, and also at a level that you can integrate into your workout routine pretty easily. And uh, I, I also think that running or biking, weightlifting, any of these things, especially as you get older, um, can become a little bit intimidating. And these guys are part of your team. They make it so that um, they are uh, uh, part of your group that you're hanging out with. And I think that's really, really important for you to uh, surround yourself with that. So again, uh, Mark Lewis, Coach Perry, uh, again, I forget Coach Perry's name, uh, first name, but Coach Perry running, if you if you type that up, he can, uh, P-A-R-R-Y, he can, um, de you'll definitely see what they do. And they're, they, they have their own, I know Coach Perry does, have their own running program. I'm not a part of that, but I, I really appreciate the content they put out. Um, Dr. Eric Berg is a uh, chiropractor. Um, chiropractic, although I don't use it a lot, I do believe in the science. Um, I have had some back issues, uh, historically, uh, being an athlete and being, uh, in, um, you know, uh, uh, as an entrepreneur and sitting a lot, I should be standing more. The standing desks are fantastic. I'm not at one now, but I will be, um, are really, really good. But Dr. Berg does a lot of things with not just chiropractic. Matter of fact, I think more of his content is <clears throat> seems to be a non-chiropractic world than the chiropractic uh, world. But he has been a, a big help with that. And um, a couple of other guys, uh, Dr. Uh, David Sinclair. David Sinclair has written a book that I have not read yet. It's called The Youth Molecule. And he talks about the idea of fasting and the science behind it. <clears throat> Him and a guy by the name of uh, Mark Sasan and uh, David Sinclair, rather, is really a leader in this field. Um, I read the book, The Future is Faster Than You Think, and they talked about this guy, David Sinclair, and what he's working on in this molecule that uh, maybe at some point will be given as a supplement is really the youth molecule. I think it's really the fountain of youth that uh, Ponce de Leon maybe have searched for in, in what, the 1500s, 1400s? Uh, but this is it in a molecule. Could we take this as a supplement? Really, really cool stuff. His work has been on longevity, along with Peter Atia. These guys are fantastic. And I've just been listening to different things, you know, what to eat, why to eat, why, you know, sugar, why it's the enemy, what it does to cells, inflammation in the body, what it does to the body and why that's bad. Um, you know, sleep and the health benefits of sleep. Um, you know, the, the other idea of, uh, uh, of this being a holistic process, diet, workout, and this other that this podcast is about has been really, really important. So again, 
I want to uh, just kind of focus on uh, uh, continuing my journey on this. I was so excited to bring this to you guys and, and let you know in this three series uh, podcast of what I've been doing. I don't talk a lot about this on social media. I talk about it here because it's kind of my outlet for that. But um, uh, if you have any questions on anything that I've been doing or who I can direct you to to help you with that, please let me know. You can always reach out to me uh, by email through any of the sites, uh, johndessauer.com uh, or any of the other sites as well. And, and let me know, put the, put the comments in the chat. I'd love to hear about your journey. If you're on one, if you're thinking about starting one, um, man, it's been a lot of fun. And, and one couple final things is it's really taken my, my focus off of stuff that I didn't need to focus on. Um, this has helped me in so many ways, uh, staying focused and staying at it and staying really, really uh, it, it, um, uh, a part of what my journey is, not my goal. Although I am getting to a goal in some extent because I am running some races and I have a weight goal that I'm already at and things like that. But the overall goal is to stay with the journey. If you love the journey enough, you'll do it. And that goes with everything. I hope uh, you know my kids when they watch this or grandkids uh, understand it's about the journey a lot of times, not necessarily the destination, although that may be important. But if you can find a way to fall in love with the journey, you'll keep doing it. Uh, Atomic Habits um, in that book was a big, dis uh, it was a big uh, um, discussion about that and why that's so important in showing up and, and making it happen. When you enjoy it, you're gonna do it for a lot longer. You're gonna do it for a lot better. And then finally, again, I wanna say this is more of a holistic approach. This isn't just working out. I think people that are looking to just work out or people to looking to just diet, you won't be on it very long because other areas in your life will pull away from that and you'll end up quitting. That's why most New Year's resolutions fail you know, within a few weeks. And uh, I don't want that to happen to you. So make this a holistic change. And then the final thing, this is the final thing, I promise you. The final thing is this idea of having a, um, uh, a mission that's more important than your, uh, this is so important to me, it outlives me, I guess is the way I want to say that. Make this so big, like my health is so important that it, it outlives a lot of things. And why am I saying that? Because priorities change when you make that happen. My health was ultimately important to me. So that outpaces, you know, me, um, eating that dessert or that outpaces me, you know, um, uh, not going out for my run or that outpaces me not making sure I get um, uh, a good sleep. I want to get a good sleep to make that happen. And so that's the thing I want to make sure that whatever the journey is, doesn't have to be this one, it could be something else, it could be starting a business, it could be, it could be uh, having a kid, it could be art, but make it bigger than your life itself. And you won't feel like you're working. You know, if you enjoy what you do it, for work, I've said that a thousand times, if you enjoy what you do, do it doesn't feel like working. And so, um, again, I, I really want to uh, make sure that everybody knows that. I appreciate everybody listening. I hope you guys do really well with your journey. It's been a lot of fun on this side. And, I, and let me know. I want to know what your journey is. And I also want to know how you're doing and how I can help if possible. So that is it for today. Remember, wealth has nothing to do with money. Success has everything to do with failure. And life is as simple as you make it. Thanks a lot, everyone. We will talk soon on the next podcast. Some great stuff coming up. You don't want to miss.